Fox Business. A Fox Business alert. The last five years of home sales reports were all wrong. In fact, the home numbers were actually worse than the so-called experts said they were. Here's another Fox Business alert. Anyone who's tried to buy or sell a home already knew that. Just like folks already know there is inflation, even though the government insists there is not. Don't real people know the real deal by living in the real world without listening to all the experts? We welcome our power players, Rob Basso, Connie DeGroote, and Todd Wildman. Todd, it, it just makes me furious sometimes when I hear these so-called experts that go through all this rigmarole, spend all this money, some of which is ours, finding out stuff that turns out not to be true later on. Oh, exactly. And then you have either Congress or some other experts, uh, uh, you know, do a policy that that's just foolish and and hurts in the long run. And people realize things are not that good, and they're not getting better markedly. You and know, people, things aren't moving in the right direction. Connie, you know better than any economist living inside the Beltway the, what is happening with housing prices. Of course, your expertise is in a particular area of California. Nevertheless, you know what's mm -hmm. happening all around the country, don't you? Yeah, pretty much. What has been the problem with like existing home sales and a lot of these reports that come out, they always reflect, reflect things that have happened, what buyers have been thinking many months ago. So when you're listening to it, I even have to remind myself of that, that when you get these numbers, positive or negative, you always have to remind yourself that that's what buyers were thinking or willing to do many months ago. And the last several years, there's been a lot of stuff going on nationally and internationally. So a couple months means a lot. And it changes uh, buyer activity. So it's been misleading and, and somewhat confusing. And Rob, we, are, we, the taxpayers, are screwed twice. One, we usually pay for these studies. And two, a lot of money is allocated from tax dollars because of these studies. You know, we've had all kinds of plans to save the housing industry. Uh, that involves millions of dollars. And they base their plans on bad numbers. Yeah, well, I guess the, the real issue is when there are declining home sales, it leads to declining prices. And it's not just for people that are, are, are actively shopping their homes. It's for everybody in the marketplace. Then you can't borrow from your HELOC. And the last time I checked, people were using that money to spend in the economy. Seventy percent of our entire economy is based on consumer spending. So if they don't have the access mm -hmm. to the money to spend, we're in the mess we're in right now. Well, Todd, do you suspect that, that some of the programs, some of the housing programs that we've seen, and again, I don't think they've had any effect. I mean, Connie can bear me out on this, but uh, that a lot of that, <laughs> a lot of those programs have been based on errant information going in. And if you, you know, the old expression, garbage in, garbage out, right? If you don't define the problem correctly, how are you going to have the solution? And you see that. And one of the biggest problems is you have an 800 pound gorilla that has really distorted the market and has not let it actually perform how it usually has, and that's the government. And they've come in and, and they've tried to make things better. I mean, politicians are here to make things better, not worse, and yet the law of unintended consequences. And so what happens is politicians says you have to loan to people, you know, and you can't discriminate. And because of that law, they loan to people that didn't, weren't qualified to, to pay back the loans. And that's the problem we're in right now. And the government makes it worse because they keep trying to gum up the works. Get out, save us. I mean, we've already wasted $300 billion with Fannie and Freddie. And we're going to have billions more. Rob? Yeah, so I agree with worth. you. I, I'm actually a founder in a community bank, and we raised $30 million to start this operation four years ago, and we're doing really well. But part of our problem is the lending restrictions are so high, and our capital reserves are at an unreasonable level. We don't want to lend the money uh, that just a few years ago we might have actually had available to the consumers. It is a big David, problem. David, I'd like to jump in Go there. Go ahead, please, Connie. I'd like to jump in there. Uh, you, with, when you buy a house, it's unlike anything else. It's, it has to do really with confidence, and it's also very emotional. You need to be confident and secure, not just in the, in the near term, but in the long term. And with so much going on, and also with the messages being delivered in a dramatic way, a very scary way, you know, it was just a couple years ago that we had the housing collapse and we had the bank situation, and, and people are still going through this. It doesn't take much, but just double dick. Or, oh no, we're going to have another problem again for people to, that were willing to write an offer, which I have personally experienced, to say, you know what, housing is going to dip again. I'm just going to wait until next year. And that's, that's what I live with every single day, that people are listening to this bad news over and over again, and it's de delivered in a dramatic 
manner, yeah. and so it scares people. But Rob, the fact is, is that the news probably was worse than we thought it was the because news, these stats weren't right. The, the news was uh, significantly more worse. I actually just heard a speech. Uh, by a candidate for president, Newt Gingrich, and he actually gave a speech at the Rotary Club. And what he said was, we, America's been living on borrowed dollars for too long, and unfortunately, we uh, got ourselves into this mess by allowing people to pr get purchase homes that really shouldn't have been purchasing homes to begin with. So I'm really not surprised uh, we're in this situation right Connie, now. Connie, how do we get rid of but that, that mess? I mean, the correct. fact, uh, Connie, hold well, on. How do we get rid of the fact yeah. that, that, that people, some of the people just shouldn't be kept in those homes because they never should have been in the first place? They were drawn into them with these teaser rates. Yeah, well, that was unfair. That was unfair that, you know, it used to be that if you didn't qualify for a loan with normal standards, that the bank or the lender would just say, I'm sorry, we, we're not going to do this for you. But we totally threw that rule book out the window and we gave yep. loans to everybody thinking that this was going to be a great thing for them. Yeah. And what did we do? We let them stay in that home for a short period of time and then they lost it and right. their family was uprooted and they were, you know, somewhat humiliated. And now they, you know, I mean, it, we didn't do anybody. Well, and Todd, and I don't want to put all the blame. I don't want to put all the blame on either the bankers, the real estate people, or even the the folks in Congress. The Federal Reserve Board kept those rates so artificially low for so long that it put people in the illusion that they could afford these homes, right? Oh, exactly. Oh, there's there's multiple fathers and mothers to this crisis. Yeah. It, yeah. it not only the Fed keeping yeah. the rates low, Congress stepping in and making bad laws and making people make loans to people that couldn't repay it, people taking out loans that they knew they couldn't repay, right. people doing liar loans and, and filling out wrong paperwork. And all so of this the, the was blame based, is everybody. All of this was based on some garbage information, as we now find out. Guys, yep. we've got to leave it at that. Todd Wyman, Connie DeGroote, Rob Basso, good to see you all. Thanks for coming.